They went for pregame in the blue jerseys just like any other game. While they were out on the field, we put the orange jerseys in their locker. And as soon as we entered the locker room, you could see the, the orange jerseys on your locker. You can't describe how emotional it, it still is. Uh, Notre Dame started it. No, no one in college football messed around with their jerseys. I mean, it was, it was traditional jerseys. Notre Dame was a heavy underdog against USC, and they came out in green jerseys. First time they had ever wore green. That's what started all of us bugging Coach Barfield about doing something special with an orange jersey. You know, the decision was made to get a, a set of orange jerseys, but when and if we were going to wear them was, you know, going to be determined at a later date. We kept asking uh, on and off. Homecoming came and went, and it didn't happen. The last home game of the year was against Georgia. Georgia was very highly ranked at the time. We really weren't. Even at home, we were a pretty significant underdog. Coach Barfield decided this might as well give it a shot. The locker room went nuts. We were beating each other. I mean, it was it was chaos. It was it was wild. It was just pandemonium. That dressing room was as crazy before the game as any dressing room I'd ever seen after the game. Man, I was on a team that never went to a bowl game. The transition between Coach Jordan and, and Coach Barfield was was tough. The special things like this meant a lot. We ran from the locker room straight out on the field. The crowd had a, a real emotional start, a, you know, a big response to the team coming out, and then it was silent. I mean, that stadium was as quiet as you could possibly, like there was nobody there. They didn't realize. They didn't who was coming out of the Porto. I mean, it was, it was a, bunch of, a bunch of orange jerseys coming out of Auburn's home Porto. Then the place just erupted. And just, you know, they, the fans were just as excited as the players were. There. It was as high as you could be before ball. It stayed that way the whole game. It, it motivated the crowd as much as it did us. We knew we could play with them. We stymied their offense all day long. Second half, we come alive, and they, they couldn't stop us. There were players that were playing way above their heads the entire game. It was, it was quite a battle. We were up 22 to 15, and they scored and went for one. They thought they could stop us and get the ball back and kick a field goal and beat us 25 to 22. But the game was different then. We didn't throw the ball a lot. It was three yards in a cloud of dust. Tied Georgia 22-22. I mean, we, we certainly were an underdog, so I mean, the, the, you don't want to really tie anybody, but tying was better than losing. Whether we would have tied them wearing blue jerseys, who knows, but it's a great thing to talk about. Yeah, Coach Dye had been there for several weeks, and you know, he called me one day and said, you still got those orange jerseys? And I said, yes, sir. He said, I don't like orange. I said, don't worry about it, coach. You'll never see them. <laughs> so I knew then the orange jerseys were history. <laughs> and you look back on it and you just, it was pretty neat to be a part of that. Those guys that wore them that first time are in the record books. I hear about people all the time, the orange jerseys coming back and you hear, you know, fables and stories and all that. But the real deal was, the coach did us a favor. You know, the coach through the seniors who had been there through some tough times, their last home game. That was his bowl game, I guess, you know. You have it, the story of the orange jersey. Will it come back? We'll talk to Charlie Trotman about it when we return. He was a big part of that day. I can't wait to hear his recollections of that day 44 years ago. Stick around, folks. The score continues right after this on Fox 20. 
All right, welcome back, everybody. This is about to be fun because it just got more fun for me during the break. More on that in a second. But our live look in every day is brought to you by Carol's Carpet Flooring America, locations in both Prattville and Montgomery. It's the most recommended flooring store around here, folks. Find out for yourself exactly why. Nobody knows that anymore so than one Charlie Trotman. Uh, he is our QB1. He was on that team in 1978 in his second year as the starting quarterback for the Tigers. That was his junior year. He and I have talked about Georgia 22, Auburn 22 a lot. Let's welcome him in. CT, I don't know about you. I'm not even an Auburn dude, and I got chill bumps watching Harris Rayburn talk about how y'all reacted. And can you just take us back? There's nothing more I enjoy than reminiscing about awesome moments. So take it away, my friend. Well, Doug, you know, we didn't go to a bowl game, and Harris was talking about that and what a disappointment that that was during our tenure at Auburn. And we didn't have as much to be excited about. And I'm telling you, when uh, Frank Cox, our equipment manager, when he put those orange jerseys in our lockers before the Georgia game, I didn't even know we were going to wear orange jerseys. Most of the team didn't know. Only the captains knew. It was Harris Rayburn and a couple of other guys that had talked Coach Barfield into wearing them. And when we came back in the locker room, you know, it's like a kid in a candy store. You're getting <laughs> something new and something that's almost outlandish. And we went berserk. <laughs> I mean, we were jumping up and down. We were hitting each other. We were slamming helmets into the lockers. We were doing all kinds of, I mean, we had more adrenaline going before that game than I think I've ever had in my life. But we came out in, in these. There it is, jerseys. folks. There it is. That is the jersey, is it not, Charlie? That is the jersey, Doug. That's the jersey that we wore in 1978. When I was a senior, they gave us all three of our jerseys, and this is it. That this is, is my jersey. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, the only the only time that it's been worn since, my daughter wore it to a Halloween party. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let me ask you this, and we got some pictures here and of you, then of your friend Joe Cribs, who also had a big day uh, in that game. Uh, there, there's something that I think we need to address here, and you as a former player is, are the, is the perfect person to do so. And that is, you know, the fan, a lot of the fan base, Charlie, is going, no, 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 don't do that. Don't wear the orange jerseys. You know, Coach Dye hated them, and he did. Coach Dye, during his time affiliated with Auburn, didn't like the orange jerseys. But here's, the, here's my point, and I want you to comment on it, because I saw something in Harris Rayburn's voice, in his emotion. If wearing an orange jersey Saturday, Charlie, excites that football team, and excites the hundreds of recruits that are and their families that are going to be there Saturday, then that's what the intent should be, not the fan base. It ought to be what it does inside your locker room. So I'm curious if you are yay or nay in at least the option of doing it for this team because Owen Papo and uh, others have said that, that Derek Hall has said, we'd like to do it. Doug, it's interesting because, you know, you mentioned the tradition and Auburn fans aren't really for the orange jerseys because they're really traditionalists and they love the Auburn colors. Well, orange jerseys, the history of orange jerseys at Auburn is now part of our history. Yes. It's not like we haven't done it before. And it's not like it's something that would be uh, communist to do. Uh, for an Auburn fan, I mean, we've done it before. It's pulling out something that would give the kids so much emotional, so much of an emotional edge. You just cannot imagine the emotion that we had. I mean, people had tears coming down their face, and 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 people were just we were we were so pumped up for that game. And Georgia was really really good that day. They came in there undefeated in the Southeastern Conference, and we were uh, 
you know, a team that had struggled some and, and uh, Doug, we played them off their feet. And, you know, had it not been for a call at halftime, William Andrews really scored on the last play of the half. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't call it, said he was down on the half yard line, but, you know, we would have won that game. So it, it was uh, a, it was a monumental day uh, for Auburn football players I don't know about the fans, but for the football players, it was a monumental day and one we'll never forget. Well, I want you to touch on a couple of my points here. Uh, And one is you saw the emotion in Harris-Rayburn. You've heard what the current players are saying. It would be the same in that locker room Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock if they got back in after warm-ups and there the orange jerseys were. That would be a spark. Two... I think you would agree, and Brian Harson has said he's not against it. He was asked last year about it. So I think you would agree, Charlie. I hope you would. I hope I'm not sticking my foot in my mouth. But his program, his first year and two games, needs somewhat of a jump start, needs some some kind of emotional occurrence that, that, that may, like, turn a corner for this football program. This could absolutely be it. I think you're right, Doug. Uh, And let me tell you what's really important about it. What you just said, if the players warm up in blue jerseys and then they go in right before the kickoff and they come back out in orange jerseys, that stadium will erupt. It would be like Mount Vesuvius again, (laughs) you know, exploding and you would you couldn't you couldn't keep a top on on that stadium. I mean, I can't imagine what it would be like. And man, you're you're right. The recruits would absolutely eat it up, and it would show that Brian Harson's not afraid to do some things that maybe the fans aren't really for. And let's be honest. Uh, during the Pat Dye time at Auburn, when, it, when in the '80s, right up to the first couple of years of the '90s. Things were just different back then. Uh, You know, you'd had what Notre Dame did. You'd had what Auburn had done. But now, with all the social media stuff and everything going on, it has become a thing to excite the recruits uh, by what you're wearing, what's a uniform look like. That's why Oregon does what Oregon does. And I don't like, I don't appreciate really fan bases saying, we don't want to be Oregon. You're not being Oregon. You're doing it for one game in a special situation. Charlie, I think you would agree this is Auburn's biggest game at home all year. It's a Big Ten SEC showdown. This is as big a recruiting weekend as Auburn's going to have all year. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just don't see. I'll, I, you're going to think this is nuts. If they don't do it now when I'm sitting there next to you, wherever we're sitting in the stadium, I'm going to be a little disappointed. I I don't mind telling you. I'm going to be looking at that portal where Auburn's going to come out for the last time, and if they're not in orange when they get back in there, I'm I'm going to be let down a little bit. Let me tell you a funny story, if I can, a little anecdotal story. I would would practice in the summer at Jeff Davis High School with my friend Randy James – Randy was the long snapper on uh, the team, on Georgia's team. And so Randy and I always talked about different things. And I told Randy, I said, you know, we got these orange jerseys that we've never worn. I don't know when we're going to wear them, but we're going to wear them at some point. And uh, you're not going to believe this, Doug, when I tell you this. This is a true story. Randy James in the in the uh, locker room, Georgia locker room, before our game, told Coach Dooley, he said, Coach, I think they're going to come out in orange jerseys. Coach Charlie Trotman and I are friends, and he told me they have orange jerseys and they were going to wear them at a spe- in a special occasion. I think they're going to come out in orange jerseys. And Coach Dooley said, no, nah, there's no way. <laughs> That's and, uh, hilarious. And, yeah, isn't that something? How have I never heard that story, Charlie? We've only worked together for 15 years. That's incredible. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it, it really was an interesting thing. And then the other thing that was funny 
is that I, I ran a long, had a long play that day. And Randy, I was going down the right sideline, the Georgia sideline, running the football. And Randy said he came within an eyelash of putting his leg out. To trip me. <laughs> well, you'd have gotten a touchdown had he done that. Uh, yeah. that, that would have yeah. been a, a score. That would have helped the day. And just to make sure historically we are correct here, that literally is one of my favorite Auburn games of all time. Charlie, you want to tell everybody why? That 22-22 tie your junior year against Georgia yeah. is one of my favorite Auburn games ever. Oh, yeah, because it gave Alabama a berth in the Sugar Bowl to win the national championship. Uh, Alabama, uh, there was a rule in the SEC that if you were the last team to go to the Southeastern Conference, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the Sugar Bowl, yeah. at the Sugar Bowl uh, that if another team had the same record as you, you couldn't go. And so if Alabama and Georgia were both undefeated in the SEC, Georgia would have gone. So we tied Georgia, and it allowed Alabama to go win the national championship. <laughs> and you did it again the next year, too, uh, when, when y'all thumped them in Athens. That wasn't even a yeah. game. Y'all smoked them. Man, how much yeah. fun has this been? Show me that jersey one more time, CT. Uh, that is the Auburn. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That is the go. number six that you've seen. Uh, Kyle, throw a picture up there of Charlie wearing that six against the Georgia Bulldogs. Here he is throwing a pass on that day so charlie are you all in then as we go to break here are you all in for brian harson to do something for his team that may not some fans may not like it but it would energize that locker room and that recruit to you are you yay or are you a hundred percent in on that possibility coach harson go on there you go <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Charlie. We appreciate it. That is our QB1. We've had good segments with Charlie in the past. We ain't never had one that good. I can promise you. The second half of the score rolls on right after this on Fox 20. <laughs> 